Bravo Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today, we are switching things up. Typically, Kayla will do a voiceover on one of my videos and it's all very fun when she does it. She has a really great take on what I'm doing in my DIYs and it always makes for a really good laugh and it's lighthearted and it's good natured and I always really love it when she does it and you all seem to enjoy it and she enjoys doing it too. She says, I always do a voiceover on your DIYs or I'll do a paper crafting DIY of yours. Why don't you try doing one of my art DIYs? And I was like, oh my. Painting is one of those things that really intimidates me. It is one of those things that I have to really challenge myself to do and really just step out of my comfort zone. And she makes it look like it is easy. And I thought, okay, well, instead of doing a canvas painting and free handing something, I'll try one of your reverse glass art paintings. And so I picked something simple like a sunflower and I'm gonna give it a go. And so I'm gonna watch a couple of her videos, I'm gonna see what she does, and I'm gonna give this a go. And let's see what comes of it. Is it as easy as she makes it look, or is it harder? We'll see. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so for this reverse glass art painting, I'm gonna be needing some glass, so I figured that this frame here from the Dollar Tree would be perfect because it's got glass and what I love about it is it doesn't have a backing. The glass fits into the center of the frame nicely and so I, I don't know it's just a feature I kind of like but what I don't need is the writing on it. So I'm going to take some of that rust lime and calcium remover and because it worked so well on my grout I thought why not let's try and take the wording off with it sprayed it on the glass let it sit for about 10 minutes and using one of these razor scrapers that comes in a six pack from the dollar tree i'm going to use that scrape off the lettering and guess what just like that we're going to have a blank slate a clean canvas although this is a glass so we'll call it a clean blank canvas glass I feel like it's gonna be easier to do the reverse glass art painting with the glass out of the frame. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the glass from this frame. It's being held in with a silicone bead. So just by taking a razor and just slicing through the silicone, you can then just pop out the glass pretty easily. And then I am going to remove the excess silicone just by kind of pulling it off and it comes right up off the frame and the glass. So like I said, I wanted to keep my image basic. This is the first time I'm having a go at this reverse glass art painting stuff. And so I didn't want to feel overwhelmed. I didn't want an image with too much detail. And so I think for the first time getting my feet wet with this, actually trying it out, a basic image is probably the best way to go. With some images, before you print them out, you may need to mirror image them because this is reverse glass art and so you don't want your picture to come out backwards. So in turn, you need to reverse the picture so when you paint it, it will come out in its correct form. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some masking tape. I'm gonna tape my picture onto my glass, then using this Craft Smart Ultra Fine Black Acrylic Ink Marker. Kayla recommended this marker. I'm gonna go ahead and guess what? Outline my image because that's what Kayla says to do, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I will tell you that as I was doing this, I found that using this pen isn't as easy as it looks. You would think, okay, it's a paint pen, it's gonna be easy to use, but I found that the paint doesn't apply evenly. I found that I was getting a line down the middle of my black line, if that makes any sense. It wasn't a solid line. And I found that it was really hard to get even lines and that's because the more pressure you put on the pen the more paint comes out 
And so there is a definite learning curve to this and outlining just isn't outlining when it comes to reverse glass art. As I do this, I guess I'm just gonna kinda tell you how I did it and what my mindset was as I was doing it. Now, this is no tutorial on how to do this because I am almost sure. No, I'm pretty positive that I am probably doing some things wrong along the way and somebody will tell me, but just keep in mind, be nice. This is the first time I'm doing this and so I'm just kind of going off of Kayla's tutorials and that I have seen. I'm not watching one as I do this and kind of just going off of, I guess, common sense or what I think it should be, how I should build this up. Now, the center of this sunflower is two different tones of brown with the slash marks or checkers in the middle because that's supposed to be, I guess, the sunflower seeds. And so I figured I'd start off with the lighter brown first and go ahead and fill in that lighter brown and hence you can see that this is the reverse glass art. You kind of build up from uh, the front to the back maybe. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but that's what I'm gonna do. And so yeah, I'm just using a basic acrylic paint by Apple Art because Kayla found that Apple Art and Craft Smart were the best acrylic paints that she liked that weren't bubbling and cracking. Now, I do know that when you put this on, you are not supposed to brush it on. You are supposed to kind of dab it or glob it on. You want kind of a thicker coat and that in turn will prevent, I guess, the paint from peeling, bubbling, and cracking. And so that much I have learned. Now, if I am doing this correctly or not, I don't know. I am trying and so we'll see. I mean, and that really is what it's all about, is just trying something new. And when you try something new, you might like it. And that's why when I try something new, I start off with something basic like this, because I feel like if you start off with something that's too detailed and you don't end up with a perfect outcome, it kind of intimidates you and makes you not wanna try it again. But if you start off with something basic, something like this, and you get an okay to a good outcome, then you're more apt to wanna to try it again and redo it. And so I'm hoping that this comes out well. I'm hoping it's something that I'll like to do. Jury's still out on that one, so we'll see. Now I'm seeing that each of the petals has a bit of shading, which is going to give it depth and dimension. And so I'm going in with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of maize. Yeah, I'm switching it up. I'm going from a basic acrylic paint to an acrylic chalk paint. I'm working with what I have. And that's what I'm gonna use to do all of the shadowing on each of the petals. The leaves and the stem also have a color variation. I'm calling it shadowing. I really don't know if that's what it is, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do those darker, I guess, shadows before I go in with the lighter colors. At about this point, this is where I started to realize that this wasn't going as smoothly as I thought it was or as well as I thought it was. Now, I was getting impatient. I wanted to see what the front looked like as I was doing it. The back, it looks like I'm filling it in nicely. I've outlined it nicely, but when I lifted it up just to kind of see how it was coming along, I started to see that there were a lot of spots missing along the black outline that I did. Now, what I'm getting from reverse glass art when you're painting like this, you need your paint to go over the black line, but you don't want your paint to go over the black line that it's going into a different color or a different area, if that makes any sense. So where does the problem get presented? 
The problem I found that was the hardest for me was Kayla told me you get the best outcome using the ultra fine pen because you don't have to go back through and thin out your lines. But with having an ultra thin outline, it doesn't give you very much black outlining to go over with say your yellow paint or your green paint or the brown paint where the yellow and brown meet. And so I found that it was very detailed work. I'm probably, no, I am using way too thick of a brush. Kayla came in and saw the brush that I was using and just said, that's your problem. You're using too thick of a brush. You need to use a thinner, more pointed, detailed brush. And so here I was thinking, okay, I need to put a lot of paint on this. How am I gonna put a lot of paint or glob the paint on if I'm using a thinner brush? And so maybe I should have just gone in and outlined it with a thinner brush, a more detailed brush, and then gone in with a bigger brush and globbed the paint on. But my suggestion is if you try this, you definitely wanna lift up your glass as you're doing each section and see if you've missed any spots along the outlining and, and you'll see it pretty quickly as soon as you lift it up. And it's kind of deceiving in all honesty because as I'm doing it here on the back side, it looks like everything's coming together nicely. It looks like all the paints are meeting up, the lines are meeting up, but when you lift it up, that is not the case at all. And you will definitely see where some of your paint areas are lighter than others and you need to apply more paint before your paint dries because once your paint dries, if you're using a paint like Apple Barrel, it will bubble after the second coat. And so to prevent that from happening, you really just need to apply one thick coat. And so again, I could be wrong, but this is just what I'm learning through Kayla and as I'm doing this and the techniques that she uses, but yeah. And so now you can see that I'm just going through and I did my petals and I'm going in with a sunshine yellow from Apple Barrel for the lighter part of the sunflower petals. So here is my painting done. I spared you the rest of me painting it because it really was just adding the lighter green. It is pretty wet, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna let it dry overnight. I'm not gonna try and speed up the drying process, I'm just gonna let it be, and in the morning we'll see how it looks. And here we are in the morning, you can see that my paint is completely dry. Now let's go ahead and flip this over and take a look at the other side. This is where the magic happens. Are you ready for it? Ta-da! That is the cool thing about reverse glass art is when you see the back, it doesn't look anything like it would on the front. But this here is the picture and you can see that just by mirror imaging the flower, once you paint it, your flowers are kind of going two different directions. But this is what's cool. This was an image that I just pulled up off of Google image. I just searched sunflower and this is what I came up with. And so, yeah, was it fun? I'm gonna say it was, it was, it was a challenge. I wanna go ahead and replace my sunflower back into the frame. And so I'm just gonna add a bead of hot glue around that inside edge of the frame and just place it back in. Once I got that glass back in, I am going to add a bit of glue to each of the corners just to ensure that the glass stays in and it's not just relying on that bead that I just stuck in there. Here's a quick tip. If you need to scrape off any excess paint or paint splatter, Dollar Tree's piercing tool works perfect. And there you go. This was my first go at reverse glass art painting, taking on Kayla's challenge. Kayla also uploaded a reverse glass art painting this week for Mother's Day. You can find the link to today's video in the description box below. I feel like I officially know what some of you feel like when you say that I make things look easy. I feel like the things that I bring to you are easy when I bring them to you the way that I bring them to you. But there are some of you who say to me, Kelly, you make it look way easier than it really is. When I did this, I had this outcome. And I always think to myself, how can I make things easier for people? Because I want them to have the same outcome. Well, Kayla says that reverse glass art is easy. She made it look easy.
Oh my word, this was way harder than I thought. I went into this thinking like, okay, I can do this. It's reverse, we're slapping some paint on some glass. We've got an outline already. How hard can this be? Oh my word. Wowzer was I, to my surprise, it was way harder than I thought. And is my glass painting horrendous? I'm not gonna say it's horrendous. I think it's very basic. And that was what I intended when I picked out this sunflower. But I will tell you that Kayla makes it look easier than it is. It is really hard to get nice, clean, crisp lines. Not only is it hard to get nice, clean, crisp lines, but it is harder than it looks to outline the picture when you're outlining it with those paint pens. I hope you all enjoyed today's video of me again stepping out of my comfort zone, challenging myself to do something that I don't typically do, and take on Kayla's challenge of this reverse glass art painting. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now.